uh, again extend a warm welcome to uh, Prime Minister Mette Frederiksen of Denmark and NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg. Uh, Mette and I, we are the co-hosts of this evening and we are so happy that also our colleagues are here from Belgium, from Portugal, from Poland and Latvia. Uh, President uh, Klaus Johannes of Romania uh, was also uh, there during the dinner, um, but he had uh, a very tight time schedule, so he's not here during the press conference. Uh, he has a state visit of the French president uh, taking place in uh, Bucharest uh, tomorrow. Um, Mette Frederiksen and I convened this meeting because we wanted uh, to give leaders of NATO member countries from different regions uh, a chance to talk informally uh, ahead of the maybe potentially crucial but at least very important NATO summit in Madrid at the end of this month. And naturally, the main topic of discussion was Russia's brutal and unprovoked war against Ukraine. Vladimir Putin must not win this war. And the countries here with us have reaffirmed their unwavering and their enduring support to Ukraine. Right here and now, on behalf of us all, I call on Vladimir Putin once again to stop this aggression. The war in Ukraine has serious consequences for security in Europe and once again underscores the need for a strong and united transatlantic alliance. Recent events have led to Finland's and Sweden's decision to apply for NATO membership. I understand this step and together with all the other leaders here, support it wholeheartedly. I'm confident that they will be a tremendous asset to our alliance at both political and military level. At the NATO summit in Madrid, we will discuss how to guarantee a robust, credible and sustainable longer term NATO deterrence and defense posture. With that in mind, it's vital that we talk about the new strategic concept, about how to adapt our alliance to meet today's threats, and tomorrow's as well. This calls for a fresh approach, new instruments, and also smarter strategies. In other words, a robust plan for the next 10 years. In light of the new reality we are sadly facing, we will also discuss the need for increased resourcing to bolster our alliance and make us more resilient to threats to our collective security. Today we had a productive informal discussion that will contribute to a successful summit. I'm really looking forward to that. And now I'd like to hand over to you, Mette Frederiksen. Thank you so much, Mark. And uh, first of all, thank you for hosting these important uh, discussions here today. Uh, Russia's brutal invasion of Ukraine marks a new and more uncertain time for Europe. Allies are uh, supporting Ukraine's heroic fight, and we have to continue to do so uh, to make sure that Ukraine will win this war. Since the beginning of this conflict, the Allies have made a number of important decisions, demonstrating without any doubt that NATO is the cornerstone of the transatlantic security and will remain so in the future. In two weeks from now, all allies will meet in Madrid to discuss the uh, direction in the future for NATO uh, in uh, some very difficult years to come. All of us here today agree that NATO is, as an alliance should come out stronger than ever from Madrid. And we are ready to deliver what it takes both when it comes to uh, NATO's military posture and increased common funding. That is our clear uh, message today. I also hope that we uh, soon welcome Sweden and Finland to the Alliance. Their membership will benefit uh, the security of us all. The bonds between Europe and US and Canada are strong. Uh, and uh, we will face all future challenges to our security uh, together. So once again, Mark, thank you for hosting this, this meeting and to enable us to show our unity as allies also here tonight. Thank you, Mette, and I'd like to give the floor to Jens Stoltenberg. Dear Jens, please. 
Thank you so much, uh, Prime Minister Rutte, dear uh, Mark, uh, Prime Minister Fredriksen, dear Mette. Thank you so much for co-hosting this uh, dinner and this very important uh, conversation among uh, seven NATO allied uh, leaders. Um, this is important because in two weeks we will uh, meet uh, in Madrid for an historic and transformative summit of all NATO leaders and take decisions to keep NATO strong in a more dangerous world. Tonight, we had an excellent discussion on our preparations, including uh, on the need to continue our strong support uh, for Ukraine, both in the short term, but also over the longer term. And I look forward to welcoming President Zelensky to address NATO leaders at our summit uh, in Madrid. In response to Russia's invasion, we have reinforced our ability to protect and defend every inch of NATO allied territory. In Madrid, uh, we will take the next steps and agree a major strengthening of our posture. Tonight, we discussed the need for more robust and combat ready forward presence, even higher readiness and more pre-positioned equipment and supplies. We also addressed the need to invest more in our defense and to invest more together to strengthen NATO's common funding. In Madrid, we will agree NATO's next strategic concept. It will assess our changed security environment and reaffirm our fundamental values and tasks, and it will be a blueprint for the Alliance's future. Finally, we also discussed um, Finland and Sweden's uh, historic applications for uh, joining NATO, their membership will make them safer and our alliance stronger. I had constructive talks with President Ninesto and Prime Minister uh, Andersson during my visit to Finland and Sweden earlier this week, and I welcome the serious steps already taken uh, to address Turkey's concerns, including the fight against PKK. Our dialogue continues to find the united way forward. So, Mark and Mette, thank you so much for hosting us all tonight. Thank you so much, Jens. And now I'd like to give the floor to Alexander de Croo, Prime Minister of Belgium. Yes, thank you, Mark. And thank you, Mark and, and Mette, for organizing this uh, very timely pre-summit in the run-up to the meeting of Madrid. It's clear that since February 20th, we live in a different world. The Russian war and the Russian aggression against Ukraine is a game-changer related to security in Europe. But the good news in this is that NATO is stronger, more unified, and more solid than it has ever been. On the eastern flank, we are showing our solidarity. We are showing what solidarity between allies actually in practice means. We also see that solidarity is attractive with Finland and Sweden applying to become part of our alliance. As Belgium, we uh, assumed our responsibility from the start, from the moment that the war started. Our fighter jets are air policing the, um, the, the skies of Poland and of the, of the Baltics, and we have a Belgian battalion which is stationed in Romania as part of the rapid response uh, force. And let me be clear, we will continue to take our responsibility. Glad uh, this evening, dear Jens, that we had uh, the opportunity to, uh, to look ahead to the summit in, uh, in Madrid, where we will adopt NATO's new strategic concept and also discuss uh, burden sharing. Within Belgium, we have a clear path in growth in military spending. With decisions from the previous and the current government, we are almost doubling our military spending by 2030, and we are working to realign our defense efforts with European non-nuclear NATO I, uh, allies. Now, the discussion is not only an input discussion. It's not only, about, not only about how much we spend, the question is also on how you spend it. First of all, this is a moment to tackle the fragmentation of our defense efforts, especially between European countries. And Mark, I think we have an example to give on how we integrate and, and how we integrate between Belgium and Dutch uh, defenses. Second element is we need to work to have a stronger European defense industry able to compete with global players. Increasing our budget means that it should benefit our industry. Made in Europe should also be a quality label in defense. And third, last element is more societal return. More investment in, uh, in the military fits in a broader security agenda. This is about 
strengthening cybersecurity. It's about providing better protection to our, uh, to our businesses and also an interesting education track for our young people. So I would like to thank you for a very productive and open discussion tonight. We are only at the beginning of a new era where the importance of NATO and European defense will continue to grow. We're looking forward to Madrid, to the discussions there under the firm and focused leadership of our Secretary General. Thank you, uh, Alexander. I'd like to give the floor to Antonio Costa, Prime Minister of the Republic of Portugal. Good evening. Thank you, Mark and Meta, for, and for this opportunity to have this meeting. We come from all Europe, Nordic, Southern Atlantic, and Eastern countries to convey a clear message of unity. We are committed to build a stronger transatlantic alliance. We stand in full solidarity with Ukraine, and we call on Russia to stop immediately this war of aggression and respect the independence, sovereignty, and the territorial integrity of Ukraine. More than ever, we need to strengthen the Euro-Atlantic defense. We warmly welcome the applications from of uh, Finland and Sweden to join NATO. We will work on a closer cooperation between NATO and European Union. And finally, we will look for the next Madrid summit as the milestone to reinforce NATO's capabilities and resources. Thank you, Antonio. I'll give now the floor to the Prime Minister of Poland, Mateusz, please. Thank you, Mark, and thank you, Meta, for gathering us all uh, here in this uh, beautiful place to discuss most important topic of nowadays. And this is, of course, uh, the war in Ukraine. And first of all, I think it's so important that we have reinforced our unity and uh, our transatlantic approach. I am a strong believer, believer in transatlantic ties, and it is so obvious to all of us that given such jeopardies and aggression and barbarian attacks as the Russian attack on Ukraine, NATO can be the, the only um, uh, blocker, the only showstopper for any further attacks on eastern flank of NATO, eastern flank of the European Union. So the reinforcing of our unity and transatlantic dimension is extremely important. But we have also asked uh, critical questions. Are we sufficiently strong in defending our European values? In Ukraine, the Ukrainian soldiers and people of Ukraine fight for the most important European and free world values, sovereignty, freedom, uh, right to live, and uh, other critical values. And I think the answer is no, we are not doing enough. We, we have not done enough to um, defend Ukraine, to support Ukrainian people, to defend their freedom and sovereignty. And this is why I urge you, I ask you to do much more to uh, deliver uh, weapon, uh, artillery uh, to Ukraine. They uh, need this to defend their country, to defend their territorial integrity and sovereignty. Where is our credibility if Ukraine fails? Can we imagine that Ukraine fails and we revert back to business as usual? I hope not. I just hope that not only the seven of us from the European Council who have been gathered by Mark and Meta cannot imagine such a scenario. I cannot imagine such a scenario. I just believe that this, is, this would be a complete failure and disaster of the European Union, of our values, and of NATO. And this is why it is so important that we focus on efficient, effective support of Ukraine here and now, not in several weeks' time, not in several months' time, here and now. And here with what is also very important is supporting Ukrainian ambitions uh, on their 
uh, road to the European Union. We support giving them the candidate status as, as quickly as possible because Ukrainian people uh, need hope and this is their major hope for the future. In uh, our discussion, we have been also focusing on a very important topic, fighting disinformation and fighting Russian propaganda. And Antonio indicated also at, you know, Russian propaganda in Africa. And it is very important that we are aware that Russian disinformation efforts and propaganda are so uh, dangerous for all of us. And this is why we have to fight this, this um, propaganda. In Poland, we uh, host um, two and a half, some two and a half million Ukrainian refugees. These are mother wi mothers with children, predominantly mothers with children. They all found shelter in Poland. Uh, they, we have given access to our healthcare system, educational system, our social security system. They want to go back to Ukraine, but they can stay in Poland for as long as they want, as long as they feel they, 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 they will um, feel secure in Poland and they, they know that they are welcome in Poland as well. Uh, in Ukraine, uh, there is a war of Euro Europe against Russian imperialism. Russia and Putin distilled from the modern history the worst which you can imagine. Colonialism, imperialism, and nationalism and, and f uh, very um, nasty uh, form of nationalism as well. This is why uh, we all have to fight uh, with, um, with Russia and uh, we have to unite our efforts. And one last thing, look at what is happening with, mm, uh, with the price of raw materials, natural resources, and wheat, crops, grain. Uh, this is uh, yet another type of weapon of the Kremlin against the free world. Putin wants to create famine in Africa, in Middle East, with the hope that the yet another migration crisis will destabilize the European Union. This is why, this is why we have to take a very decisive stance here and now uh, with regard to the war in Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you, Mateusz, for that very urgent message. And now, finally, the floor to the Prime Minister of Latvia, Christianis. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Mark. Also, thank you, Meta, for uh, co-hosting this event. The world uh, really has changed uh, since February 24th, uh, when Russia, uh, from a war which it had been waging for eight years in the Donbas, went to a full-out, brutal, uh, unprovoked attack on all of Ukraine with the goal of annihilating Ukrainian statehood and annihilating uh, Ukrainian identity. Uh, Putin, uh, in starting this war, I think he did not count on two things. One, he did not count on the resistance uh, of the Ukrainian people and the Ukrainian army. And two, I don't think he counted on the reaction that we in Europe and in NATO uh, have had, and that is he has pushed us together and reunited us in a way that uh, maybe we have not had this sense of purpose for many years. Uh, we, uh, uh, today we're speaking uh, about the transatlantic relationship and the need to strengthen this bond, but we also need to strengthen Ukraine to help them in this war because there's only one way to restore peace and security in Europe. That is for Ukraine to win the war and for Russia to lose the war. So the Ukrainians need weapons, they need financing, and I also think they need our political support in opening a pathway to the European Union. But in addition to strengthening and helping Ukraine, it's important that as NATO member states, we strengthen the NATO alliance, not only politically, but very practically, militarily, all along the eastern flank, from the Baltic down through the Black Sea, because the threat is very real. In NATO, we say, and correctly say, that we will defend every inch of NATO territory. But we have to make those words very credible 
by making sure we have the troops, the weapons, the capabilities all throughout the eastern flank to make this a reality, especially in the Baltics, which are between Russia and the Baltic Sea. It's important to shore up the presence uh, up to a brigade level so that the deterrence uh, is very real indeed. The least expensive or the cheapest way to fight a war is never to have to fight the war. To have enough deterrence on the ground to make sure that no one ever comes in. And that must be our goal uh, in NATO. And finally, I think it's important to say that as democracies, we must not be afraid of being strong, also strong militarily. And we see as the world is changing, it even becomes a necess necessity. In order to defend our way of life, we must be strong. So thank you once again, uh, Mark and Meta and Jens. Looking forward to the summit in a few weeks. Thank you.